These are the biggest focus mistakes I see Sony video users make, including pros. And in this video, I'll show you how to correct all of them. And thank you, KEH Camera, for sponsoring a portion of this video. Mistake number one. One of the biggest focus mistakes Sony video users make is always using the wide focus area. In situations where a subject is clearly obvious, using the wide focus area is generally okay. But when the frame is looking busy, it's best to start using a smaller focus point to narrow down on a specific area to avoid focusing on the wrong subject. Mistake number two. Always leaving face and eye autofocus on. When we're capturing sceneries like landscapes or architecture, nothing ruins the shot more than someone walking into your frame and your camera decides to shift focus to them. That is why it is important to disable face and eye recognition when we're filming these kinds of shots. Now, cameras that are specific to vlogging, like the ZV series, have a feature called Product Showcase, where with the push of a button, the camera disables face and eye autofocus. This allows the host to showcase any product they want to share in their video, hence Product Showcase. But for cameras that are designed with more pro features, we have that setting, but it's not specifically labeled in that way. What we want to look out for is face and eye priority and autofocus in our settings. Then what we can do is assign it to a button or set it as one of our quick function menu items. This will allow us to disable face and eye recognition easily when we're filming sceneries or objects that aren't humans. Building on top of what we learned from mistake number one, we can then select a smaller focus area to further avoid the faces in the crowd. Mistake number three, using the wrong subject recognition. Now, while this may sound like a no-brainer, you may be surprised how often we overlook certain settings. We might be recording our pets one day and the next, forget we left it on animal eye autofocus, and wonder why the heck human focusing isn't working. What I like to do is set one of my quick function menus to have the different subject recognition so I can quickly choose between which subject I want the camera to focus on. Now, you may be asking, how come the camera can't distinguish between all the different subjects at the same time? They're all clearly different. Yes, but in an environment where we have all of those different subjects in one frame, it can be confusing for the camera to choose what to focus on. The way that Sony cameras are set up is that we have to choose which subject recognition the camera should be on the lookout for. The more specific we are, the better job the camera does at seeking and honing in focus. So if we tell it human face, it will only seek out and focus on human faces. If we tell it to focus on bird eyes, it will seek out and focus on birds. Mistake number four. One of the biggest focus mistakes I've seen other Sony video users make is having their focus speed and sensitivity either set too high or too low. Speed is how fast the focus shifts between two different points, and sensitivity is how often the camera changes subjects to focus on. For example, if the sensitivity is high and something comes into your frame, your camera will react right away. Or if it's on low, it will likely ignore and stay focused on your initial subject. Setting speed and sensitivity to the max can cause erratic focus changes. Might be best for run and gun style type of videos where you're bouncing between different subjects, but in instances where you're shooting a static scene, it can look very amateurish. Vice versa, setting it too slow will cause it to, well, view too slow. It might be perfect for rack focus situations between two different objects for a more slower paced cinematic style, but for typical videos, it might view too slow. When in doubt, just keep it normal and standard. If you have a newer model, it's gonna be five and five. But finding a balance for your specific shot will always yield the best results. Coming up next, don't miss out on the last few tips because these are some of the biggest focus mistakes I've seen, even from pros. But first, a huge shout out to KEH Camera for their continued support to help make my tutorial content free to the public. I'm sure you heard by now, KEH Camera is a reputable online store that sells pre-owned camera gear. Everything that comes through their way get thoroughly inspected so you can shop with confidence. All purchases come with a 180 day warranty should something go wrong, or 21 days to return if you end up not liking it. Now, you don't need me to tell you, this is the perfect time to pick up some great lenses to pair with that new camera that you got over the holidays. Or perhaps you spent a little too much money on buying presents, you can also consider selling some of the gear you no longer use to KH camera. If you're satisfied with the initial quote, you can send in your gear for the same thorough inspection. And hey, if you're happy with the final quote, you get paid via check, PayPal, or even store credit. But if you end up changing your mind, they will ship your gear back 
free of charge. To learn more, check out the link in the description box below. Thanks for listening. Happy holidays. Now back to the video. Mistake number five. One of the biggest focus mistakes Sony video users make is having too much reliance on the touch tracking autofocus. Touch tracking autofocus is incredible and it works great in ideal situations. But there are users who will simply rely on it too much and wonder why they struggle to get good results. For touch tracking autofocus to work the best, the subject the camera tracks need to stand out. For example, if your subject is dressed in all black and you're filming in a dark area, then of course the tracking box will have a hard time keeping up. But if there are plenty of light and the subject is quite distinguishable from the rest of the things in frame, then it will likely do a fantastic job at keeping up with your subject. Mistake number six. Speaking of touch tracking autofocus, remember not to tap on the screen too hard, especially if you're using a longer telephoto lens or filming macro objects. Any physical interaction can be reflected in your footage and shake or jitters might appear. If you're in a controlled environment, the best way is to use a remote or connect to a smartphone to shift the focus point around. And finally, number seven. One of the biggest focus mistakes Sony video users make, including pros, is not locking down the focus. For example, these fake slider shots where we're using some type of foreground to exaggerate our movement, the mistake I often see, even in pros, is that they leave the autofocus on, so when they go behind the foreground element, the camera will shift the focus on that, thus ruining the shot. So all we want to do is to lock our focus on the main subject of interest first. Combining everything that we've learned in this video, we can do that by putting a smaller focus point on it or tap on it and let the autofocus do the work. Once the camera achieves focus, we then want to disable the autofocus so when we slide out from our foreground, the camera will stay locked on the main subject. Woo, what a beauty of a shot. Now, hot tip for you, I personally program the autofocus and manual focus toggle on the AF on button on the camera so I can quickly enable and disable autofocus on the fly. By the way, if you're struggling filming videos in low light, check out my guide here on the screen. And hey, if this isn't the first time that I've helped you out, consider throwing your boy a bone via a super thanks. Super appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.